Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 29. Lesson number 29. And we are on page number 232. Please turn to it. Just give me a second here. I lost uh, track of my page here. 232. I don't know how it happened. I had it open a second ago. There we go. 232. We are going to do the percentage problems that you see there at the bottom of page 232. Uh, two percentage problems that you see there, number 10 and 11, and we're going to do the two problems on the next page, 12, 12 and 13, four percentage problems. These four percentage problems, 10, 11, 12 and 13 that you see there on page 232, uh, bottom of page 232 and the top of the page 233, are the exact same problems that have already appeared in the first and the second edition of the GRE. In my hand, I'm holding the very first edition of the GRE. If you're interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions on day number 87, 88, oh sorry, day number 89 and 90. Day number 89 and 90. In addition to that, in addition to that, if you want to practice some more percentage problems, you will find bonus percentage problem, that's what it says here, bonus percentage problems on day number 87, 88 and 91. There are quite a few problems there. If you go through all of those, you'll be all set. But here we're going to do all of these problems in one video. If you want to go at a slower pace, watch the original solutions. Okay, I'm not going to go into too much details here. Number 10. Number 10 says the salary, salary goes up from 200 to 234. I'm going to throw away this marker so that I don't keep picking it up. question is what's the percentage change? What is the percentage change? Well we know change is 34. It goes from 200 to 234. The change is 34. There are two ways to go about, uh, go about solving this problem. One is a very traditional, very orthodox, very classical way where you set it up as an equation and solve for the unknown. Here's, or you can do the quick and dirty way. But the quick and dirty way requires some intuitive understanding as opposed to being able to do it mechanically. For example, before I get into this thing, for example, Let's take a look at some sim a very simple example. Would you agree? Would you agree if I were to tell you that 25 is 50 percent of 50? Would you agree that 25 is 50 percent of 50? Of course you would agree. Why not? You're not insane. Well, what we need to understand is that what we need to understand is this part. If 25 is 25 is 50 percent of of uh, 50 then if 25 is 50 percent of 50 then 25 must be 25 must be 25 percent of 100 are you with me watch what happens okay i'm going to put it in a different color because this color is too light let's get it's too light. One more time. 25 is 50% of 50. Of course, 25 is half of 50. 25 is 50% of 50. If 25 is 50% of 50, then 25 must also be 20, 50 divided by 2, which is 25. 25 must also be 25% of twice the amount. 25 must be 25 must be half, what was the whatever the original percentage was, half the percentage of twice the amount, that's what they say. The same amount, a, a given amount, a given amount, if it's, a, if it's a certain percentage, a given amount, if it's a certain percentage of some amount, then it must also be half of that percentage of twice the amount. That's what it is. And if we understand that part, this problem we don't have to do anything. We don't have to do anything. Look, change is 34. Change is 34. 34, would you agree that 34 is 34% of, 
Would you agree that 34 is 34 percent of 100? Would you agree? Of course you would agree. I keep, I, like I keep assuring you, because you're not insane. Yes, I know you need my assurance. Of course, 34 is 34 percent of 100. If 34 is 34 percent of 100, then 34 must also be half the percentage of twice the amount. What is 34 divided by 2? It is 17 percent. There we go, we are done. 34 is 17 percent of 200 of 200, which is what the question was asking. If the salary goes from 200 to 234, what's the percentage change? Well, it went up by 34. It went up by 34. What was the base? What was the base uh, number? What was the point of reference? Point of reference was 200. The question here, the question here simply was, 34 is what percentage of 200? Well, we just found out 34 is 17 percent of 200. Of course, it takes time to explain all this thing if you do not grasp that concept immediately. But if you were able to grasp that concept immediately, intuitively, then it was very obvious. We didn't have to do anything. It's just very obvious that it's 34 and this is 200. It's going to be 17 percent because 34 is 34 percent of 100. No, we don't have 100. We have 200. So it's going to be 17 percent. That's all. But if you insist, if you insist, and if you're hell bound, hell bent on it, we'll do it also the classical way. And the classical way, we have to set up the equation. That's all. So let's set up the equation, shall we? So the question here is, it changes by 34, the change here is 34, and the question is, 34 is what percent, it, what percent of 200, that's the question. Because 200 is our point of reference, that's what we started out with. So let's do it. 34 is means equal, what is our unknown, percent means over 100, off means times 200. Immediately, immediately, Immediately we can divide top and bottom by 100, 100 goes away and then we cross out the two zeros. So 2 times x equals 34, let's divide both sides by 2, and x is 34 divided by 2 right here, x is 34 divided by 2 right here. That's what we're looking for, x is 34 divided by 2 is 17 percent. Let's do number 11, let's do number 11, we spent too much time on that one. Eleven says somebody's weight, apparently somebody is on a diet, and this person's weight decreases from 160 to 152. The weight goes down, goes down from 160 to 152. In other words, it drops by drop of eight eight pound. This amount, this number that they give us, they do not tell you that's a drop of eight pounds. I'm telling you this thing. You can tell, you can see right away that it goes from 160 pounds to 152. That's a drop of eight pound. The question is, what is that as a percent? How much how much weight did I lose in terms of percentage if I tell you that I just lost eight pound? It will be very nice to go from 160 to 152. What is that in percentage? Again, if you insist, we can do it out the classical way, in which case the question would be 8 is, in which case the question would be 8 is what percent of 160? That's the question. But we really don't have to do it the classical way. Simply, You simply have to see these numbers are there for a reason. You simply have to see that 10% of 160, 10% of 160 is 16. 10% of 160 is 16. Would you agree? We don't have 16, we have 8. That's half the amount. So how do you get convert 16 into an 8? Divide that by 2. And if you're going to divide that side by 2, you must divide this side by 2. There we go. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5% 5 of 160 is equal to 8. So the question was, 8 is what percentage? The answer is 5. answer is 5. That 5% 5 of 160 is. This is one way. Or we can do it the classical way. The classical way requires setting up the equation. Let's do it right here on the top. So we're going to do the classical way. 8 is means equal. What is the unknown? Percent means over 100. Off means times 160. Alright. Let's first divide top and bottom by 10, get rid of the 0. Let's isolate the x. 
just isolate the x. So x is going to be 8 times 10, 8 times 10 over 16. There we go. Divide top and bottom by 8, 8 is going to go away, 16 is going to become 2. Divide top and bottom by 2, 2 is going to go away and 10 becomes 5. x equals 5, which is what we just, 5% of 160 is 8. 5% of 160 is 8 pounds. So he, he apparently dropped by his weight by 5 percentage points. Nice round number, 5 percentage point. Which is what I am in the process of doing for the last 20 some years. I lie, I am not lying to you. I have been watching my figure. But unfortunately, I have simply been watching it grow. Number 12. Initial value of stock, we are told. Initial value of stock, we are told, was $40. What happens after that? We are told that the value goes up by 20% and then it drops by 25%. What's the final price? What's the final price of the stock? What is the final price of a stock? A similar problem appeared in the exam in the past where, we're where they were talking about value of a house and they told you that originally the house was worth this much amount the next year the price went up by that much percentage and the following year the price of the house dropped by such and such percentage what was the final price of the house that problem will appear here in the bonus problems 87, 88 and 91 I don't know which one but one of these days we did several percentage problems and that's appeared there this is how we go about it don't worry about all this mumbo jumbo don't worry about the number start with a base of 100 start with a base of 100 100 represents the whole amount, 100%. Do you understand? What happens initially? It goes up by 20%. So don't worry about the percentage, just go to 20%. So 20% of 100 is 20, it's going to become 120. It goes up by 20%. Then what happens? It drops by 25%. 25% is a quarter, isn't it? So what is one what is the quarter of what is the quarter of 120? Quarter of 120, 30. So it drops by 30. Or if you like, I can show you the steps. So what happens first? It goes up by 20%. 20% 20 of 100 is 20. It becomes 120. What happens then? It drops by 25%. 25% of 120, we just found out, is 30. So it drops by 30. What does this 90 represent? 90 represents the final, the final percentage of the amount. The final percentage of the amount. What amount did we start out with? What, what amount did we start out with? We started out with 40. So we are left with 90% of the value. We are left with 90% 90 of, 90 of the value. The initial value is $40. Final value is 90% of the initial amount. 10% of this amount is 4. If you subtract 10%, if you subtract 10%, this amount represents 90% of the initial value. Why 90%? Because an increase of 20% and then a drop of 30% has a net result of dropping the initial amount by 10%. That's all. Let's do number 13, the very last one. Is that right? That's the very last one. We already approached it. The very last one is actually not even it's not even percentage problem, it's a ratio problem. And it's a very simple one. We are dealing with cats and dogs and we are told that there are 30, 20 of them together. 20 total animals and we are told that the ratio of dogs to cats is 3 to 2 3 to 2 the question is what is the question asking how many cats are there at the shelter how many cats how many dogs they go to both of them how many of each well 3 to 2 3 to 2 gives us 5 parts total 5 parts total and we are told that there are 20 animals so 5 parts equals 20 5 parts equal 20 which means 1 part which implies 1 part 
must be equal 4. 5 parts equal 20, 1 part equals 4. In other words, we divide top and bottom, multiply rather, multiply top and bottom by 4 and we are done. We have, we have 12 cats and 8 dogs. Or rather the other way around, the other way around. The dogs are on the top there. So we have 12 dogs and 8 cats, hence 20 animals. Do you understand? That's it. In the next video, in, on day number 30, we'll finish up this section by doing problem number 14 and 15. Okay? Bye now.